guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make dark industrial techno like under black helmet. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that stuff in this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available and has been since yesterday. And yeah, let's get started. The first sound that we have here, we're at 134 BPM, is this lead, which sounds like this. <laughs> So I'm trying to do something a little bit different here. This is the kind of lead like you hear in a few of their tracks. You know, they like these very, or he likes these very hard and like kind of chaotic sounds like this. And we'll get into that a little bit more when I show you the sound. But here are the notes you can see. It's just playing between F and F sharp. Across two octaves. Really simple stuff. You know, just keeping it really simple. For the sound on this one, it's made using analog. What we have here is we have two saw waves. I've got them an octave apart, and they're being detuned a little bit. And then those are going into this low-pass filter. The low-pass, you can see, has an envelope on it, which is shaped like this. I've also got the LFO on there a little, so it's moving it. I'm making it so it's not just the same thing the whole way through. But yeah, then we got the amp envelope set like this. I've also got a bit of vibrato and a bit of unison. This kind of goes into the stuff I'm going to show you next, which is like making the sound a bit more like big and chaotic like this. If I turn off the unison, you can hear it's like a lot more straightforward sounding. You can hear the pitches of the notes really clean, but if I turn on the unison, you can hear it, it starts to obscure it a little bit. So stuff like that, it's important to pay attention to those little details, basically. After that, I've got this chorus just kind of spreading the sound out a little bit, making it a bit bigger. Then we have this echo, as well as this reverb. These are both giving the sound space. You can see we got the echo on eighth notes, the reverb set like this. And with this one, it's more about how they go into this amp here. I'll turn off the amp. And I'll turn off the saturator, too. You can hear these are pretty standard stuff. It's mostly just like having these kind of smaller delays and reverbs and then putting them into the distortion like this. This is how you get this like big, like I said, kind of chaotic sound. So yeah, we got the short reverb, short delay. And then we have this distortion here. I've got an amp and I've got a saturator as well. So these two are kind of teaming up here. Like I said, we put these after all the effects. So it's kind of just turning it into this big like... Kind of distorted sound like this. I'll turn off the, I'll turn off both of them and then turn them on one by one so you can hear what they're doing. So you can hear the amp gives it that first little bit of like kind of blowing it out, and then the saturator. The thing with this one is I have the bass frequency up quite a bit, so this is what really like blows it out. That bass frequency tends to kind of like blur things is the best way to put it. If I turn it off, you can hear it's just kind of like a straight synth. But then this gives it that like crunchy kind of big feel. So you can see how it's like kind of everything coming together to make the sound. You know, we had the unison starting off, then the chorus and the echo and the reverb, and then we take those and put them through distortion and then even more distortion. And there you go, that's how you get a sound like this. And then I have this compressor here after that, just side chaining this to the kick. I have the kick in two layers. We have the kick and the rumble, so I'm just side chaining it to the punch and the kick. And then the last thing on there is just this EQ8, which is cutting out the lawn. And that is it for the lead. The next sound we have here is this arp, which sounds like this. This one is also pretty simple musically. You can see it's just going again around F and F sharp. We have F down here. Then we have an F up here. Then we have an F sharp. And then over here it's just F and F sharp. So this is a pretty simple sort of like dark industrial techno arp like you hear in a lot of tracks. But yeah, it's very simple. It's more just about the rhythm and kind of like how it's playing off of the drums and all of that. But yeah, so for the sound on this one, it's made using Operator. What we have here is you can see this FM sound where I've just got 
three sine waves, all the different octaves, all detuned from each other, doing some FM. And yeah, that's how you really want to approach one of these kinds of sounds. Like, the way it works is it's basically this kind of metallic, like I said, like industrial sound like this. So you want to use FM synthesis because you just can't quite get this kind of a sound with saw waves and square waves alone. I mean, you would, in theory could with distortion and stuff, but like, FM synthesis is just a very nice playground, I feel like, for these kinds of sounds. So yeah, and then I've got this going into a low pass filter. The low pass has an envelope on it, so here's without that. And then with it, I noticed with these kind of sounds in their tracks, like these kind of arms are very popular in, in a lot of techno in the style. But in Under Black Helmet tracks in particular, he uses these very like plucky kind of arms like this. So this is the purpose of the low pass filter. Also got an LFO on here. This is just moving the volume of oscillator C actually. And you can do that just making it kind of like morph and evolve by turning the salvo off. You can hear it, it's just kind of like sitting in one place sonically, but with it. There we go, you can hear it moving and changing over the course of time with this track. After that we have a bit of echo, just doing dotted eighth notes as well as a bit of reverb. These are both giving the sound some space. I'll show you here's without these and I'll turn them on one by one. So yeah, it's important to get the echo as well as that kind of like dark, ominous reverb. And yeah, after that we've got a bit of saturation. This is just like with the lead, it's kind of just taking it and just distorting all the effects and the sound all together and making this big kind of like almost blurry distortion thing. Here's without it. You can hear it's just like a very clean, straightforward pluck, but with it. It takes that clean, straightforward pluck and just gives it that really crunchy industrial texture. So now I've got that side chain to the kick as well, and then I have an EQ8 cutting out the low end, and that is it for the ARP. The next thing that we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. So I'm trying to do this a little bit differently to how I usually do my kick. So what I did here is we have two layers. They're the same sample. It's just this 909 kick. This is the type of kick you want to start with with this style, you know, just a very like punchy kick from a 909 drum machine like this. But yeah, so we have basically the punch layer. And then we have the rumble layer. And you can see the rumble layer is the same sample. So then I've got those in a group being processed together. And yeah, so this is one of many ways you can do these kicks. This is kind of good because if you want to be able to have like a lot of control over it, you can actually do this where you just straight up like freeze and flatten the second one, the rumble. And then you would have it as audio and you could kind of like see it and get a little bit more control over playing around with the rumble. Like you'd have something like this and then I'll put that side chain on there. And so yeah, like, there are definitely benefits to doing it this way, just as there are benefits to doing it normal way. But yeah, so here's the first layer, this is the punch, it's just that 909 kick sample. Going through a bit of saturation, you know, just kind of makes it hit a bit harder. And yeah, and then on the rumble chain, we've got, so basically I've got, I'll just turn everything off and kind of go one by one here. So, first thing we have here is like I said, the standard 909 kick. And then I have that going into a reverb, which is 100% wet. And that's going into the saturator. Which you can hear just takes the sound, really blows it out. You know, you get that, that really crunchy reverb. But you can also hear it brings out the low end a lot more. So then after that, I have a utility to convert it to mono. And then we have a low pass filter. And so this is where you get the rumble. We're taking this sound and filtering it down just to that low rumble. So yeah, and then after that I just have a bit of saturation. You can hear fans it up a bit, gives it a bit more texture. Then we have this EQ8 cutting out at 100 hertz, which makes room for the punch kick. And then I have a compressor here, side chaining it to the punch kick. And that is it for the rumble. So then, like I said, I just have those two layers in a group and then we have a bit of processing I'll show you here is without any processing. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
And then with this, you can hear what this does. It glues the punch and the rumble together and makes it all feel like one very hard hitting and powerful kick. So the first thing here is just a bit of EQ, just kind of cutting out some low mid range, also boosting here a little bit, which kind of helps with like the punch and attack of the kick. Then after that, we have the saturator and this drum bus. So I was really trying not to use drum bus in this one. I wanted to do this all with different stuff, but the drum bus really does just help to like glue the kick together, you know, with the rumble and so that's also what the saturators doing. I'll show you here's without these, and then I'll just turn them on one by one. So you can hear that saturator is just fattening everything up, making it hit a bit harder. And then the drum bus just takes all of that and kind of like pushes it together. And one thing I'll say if I am going to keep using drum bus here, at least I can explain to you what the drum bus is doing. So what's going on here is basically this hard setting. I know this because I studied drum bus when I made my drum bus for Ableton 9 rack. Link to that is in the description. Uh, but like I said, this hard setting here is doing sort of like a limiting distortion. So what's happening is it's distorting the sound in a way that's like fattening it up. Like it's not obviously just like putting an overdrive on there. It's, it's a very kind of like transparent distortion where it just fattens everything up. But then it's also limiting it. So this will be the same as if we literally put a limiter on here and just like started pushing that up. And I'll show you the difference here. Here's the difference between the medium and the hard setting. So here when that hard setting comes on, all of a sudden it, like everything feels a lot more even and flatter. This is what the limiter, the limiting distortion is doing. If I put this on the medium setting and then put a limiter on here. There you go, it's doing the same thing. So yeah, it's just a matter of like, kind of strategically using compression as well as saturation because really limiting is just very, very hard compression. And then that saturation combined in there to get it to really fatten up like that. And then we also have the transients turned up there. You know, that's just making it hit a little bit harder. It's kind of turning up the attack there. Again, just some slight compression. But yeah, and then after that, we just have another EQ8. This is boosting the low end as well as boosting the mid range. This mid range boost really helps with the punch. I'll turn this off and turn it on again so you can really get that like in the mid range with that boost. And then I'm also going to go mid range cut, just cutting out some mud. And that is it for the kick. So then the next thing that we have here are these hi hats. I'll show you them individually really quick. Here is the first one. It's just a shaker. This is just playing constant 16th notes. But this one is just more about like the type of sound you get, like just this very mid rangey sound, which has a lot of body to it. You can also see I played around with the velocities a little bit on here. So yeah, just kind of like subtle details like that. I feel like that actually does make a big difference in terms of like how this is hitting in the track. So yeah, then after that we have the main hi-hat. This is the one playing on the upbeat. It's two layers. It sounds like this. So we have this one, which is kind of more for like the bright high end. And then this one, which you can hear, really gives it the attack like that. And then the body on the sound as well. And then we're laying those two together to get the best of both. So then like I said, I've got all this hi-hats in a group. We've got a bit of processing on there. The first thing we have here is a bit of reverb. Here's without this. And then with it. So you can know, this actually adds a lot to the track. Like I said, with this kind of more like dark industrial style where obviously, you know, this isn't like the super, super hard industrial stuff or even what most people would probably consider to be industrial techno. But this is industrial in a different way. It's meant to be more kind of like warehousey and just ominous. And so this reverb really, really helps with that. I feel like it just gives these hi-hats that particular kind of like... you know, raw warehousey feel to them. It also helps to glue the hi-hats together because you're kind of putting everything in the same room. So it makes all the hi-hats sound a lot more like they're coming from the same place. After that, I have the saturator here without this. And with it, so you can hear, this is what's fattening the sounds up and really kind of gluing them together and just making it all really hit as well. And the last thing we have on here is a bit of compression. So here's without this. And with it, so it's actually a little bit quieter with it. It's because I turned off the makeup gain. But what this is doing is it's helping to kind of even out the high outs a little bit. Without this, I felt like they were very kind of apart. 
Does that make sense? Sounds like that shaker and then the one that's playing on the upbeats. Just didn't all feel like one sort of like hi-hat section, but with this, it evens out the volumes a little bit more. It makes that hi-hat on the upbeats kind of like push together a little bit more. It makes the two layers feel more like one. It's also making the shaker, like I said, more even in volume. And yeah, so with this one, the main thing is just not doing too much. Like I've got the threshold really not that high. You know, it's just compressing the peaks. And then I've got the attack up a bit, so it doesn't mess with the transients of the sounds. The way the attack on a compressor works is it's just how long it takes for the compression to kick in. So if I put this on one-shot mode, kind of think of it like this fade in here. See how that's like fading in a little bit? This would be like no attack on the compressor. It just hits right at the start. And then with all like with all of it, as I turn it up, you can see it kind of takes a little bit longer to come in. That's how the attack on the compressor works. So this helps to not flatten out the transients on these hi-hats. I make them still have that same kind of attack to them while still getting the nice compression on the body of the sounds. So that's going to be it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments as well. Like I said, I was trying to do a little bit of different techniques today, kind of show you some different sounds that I haven't shown you guys before. Do things a little bit differently. Let me know what you think of that for sure. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets. Everything like that from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much guys and I will see you tomorrow with another video.